Okay, so in this talk, we are going to consider uh, part of the process for determining the radius and interval of convergence. So there was a previous talk where we considered the case where the coefficient, so the power series is this, summation a k x to the k. Mm -hmm. And in a previous talk, we considered a situation where the coefficients either grow or decay super exponentially. And in that case, the radius of convergence is infinite if they are uh, growing, uh, sorry, infinite if the coefficients are decaying and zero if the coefficients are growing, right? Uh, there's two other cases. One is where the coefficients grow or decay exponentially, okay? In that case, the radius of convergence is a finite positive thing and it's the roughly the reciprocal of how quickly the coefficients grow. This number, the limb soup, roughly describes the exponential growth rate of the coefficients and uh, and the reciprocal of that gives you the radius of convergence. So the coefficients are growing, then uh, the radius of convergence should be less than 1 because the reciprocal of something bigger than 1 and the coefficients are decaying, then the radius of convergence should be greater than 1. Okay. So, but right now we are going to consider a simpler situation, not really simpler, but just so we don't have to worry about the exponential growth rate. Situation where the coefficients grow and the or decay sub exponentially. What that means is that they actually, there's no, nothing that the coefficients are not growing or decaying exponentially at all. So, this limb soup, what would that be if there's no exponential growth or decay happening? What should the limb soup be? I'm not sure. Well, just think. So, if, if like if it's just a polynomial or something, well, exponential growth would mean the limb soup is bigger than one. Exponential decay would mean it's less than one, right? Mm -hmm. So, if it's not, if it's actually sub exponential, then what would happen? The limb soup would be one. Would be exactly one, right? So, if you just had a k as a polynomial, then when it is a polynomial function to the power one over k, it's sort of not fast and not growing fast enough to actually give you something bigger than one, but it's not decaying, so it's not giving you something less than one. It'll just give you one. So whenever the coefficients are purely sub-exponential, there's nothing exponential or super exponential about them. The radius of convergence is the reciprocal of one, which is one. One. So the radius of convergence is always one. Right? Good. So what's left? We found the radius of convergence. Anything more to do in the sub-exponential case? Hmm? The interval, of the interval of convergence, which means we have to figure out what do we have to figure out? What two points do we have to think about? End points. End points, which in this case, because the radius of convergence is 1, are just the numbers minus 1 and 1. Okay, assuming that, assuming you have centered at 0. Okay. Now, how do we figure out what happens at minus 1 and 1? Well, you can just try plugging in the values, right? Hmm? Mm -hmm. They cannot, the camera cannot see you nod. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, okay. And for this, there's actually a test we, we consider called the degree difference test, which resolves some of the cases. So consider the situation where the coefficients are just rational functions in key. Okay. okay. In that case, what happens when you plug in x equal to 1? Let me write that down. So, so this is sort of for this case, right? So when x equal to 1, what do you get? What summation do you get? Just the summation of these rational functions, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, by the way, when we are trying to figure out convergence, we don't really care where the summation starts, whether it starts at 0, 1, 5, or 50, mm -hmm. right? So I'm, I'm sort of being a little loose here. I'm not caring about where it starts. What about x equal to minus 1? What does that give you? Negative 1. Is this here in the camera? Yeah. To the case power times the rational function. Okay. Now the degree difference test, we we had one thing for just the summation, we had another thing for this, right? Mm -hmm. For just the summation, what was the condition for it to converge? The degree difference between Q and P mm -hmm. has to be greater than 1. Strictly greater than 1. And uh, what was the condition for the thing at, for the sine thing to converge? Greater than zero. Greater than zero, exactly. So now we can determine the interval of convergence in all cases. Let's just do it. So degree difference is greater than one. In that case, what happens? At x equal to one, converges. Mm -hmm. At x equal to minus one, also it converges, right? Mm -hmm. So the interval of convergence is what? Negative one and one. Yeah, because <laughs> it's closed. Close. <laughs> yeah. 
close negative one closed one okay Oops. and uh, what happens if the if it's zero less than degree q minus degree p less than equal to one in that case what happens the first one mm -hmm. is open on both ends the second one is closed on both ends. No, no, there's no, there's one end it's open and one end it's closed. Oh, this one, the first one, you know, this one? Uh -huh. Wait, no. We got confused with something. I don't know what you're saying. This one, at one, it diverges, right? Mm -hmm. And at minus one, it converges. Mm -hmm. So therefore, it's closed at minus one, open at one. Oh, yeah. Okay, Sorry. and and the degree difference less than equal to zero. In that case, neither one will converge because the terms don't go to zero, right? So in that case, it's open interval minus one one. Okay. Okay. Good. So now we have that. Now let's do a few examples. Okay, good. So let's have these examples. So first of all, let's look at all these examples. Are all of them situations where the coefficients are sub-exponential? Uh, yes. Yes. Okay, good. So which means, what can we say about the radius of convergence in all these examples? One. One. Well, that was quick. You did... Nine of them in one second. Yes. That's great. Okay. So let's now try to do the interval of convergence, right? There's only four possibilities. So even if you guess, you'd get 25% of them correct. Uh, we well, better. not really. Because I'm not guessing randomly. If I get, if I understand something wrong, I'll probably guess all of them wrong. Okay. Well, I hope we get all of them right. Okay. So let's look at the first one. What's the degree difference in this case? One. Okay, and so what? Uh, what can we say? Which case do we land in? It's closed on negative one. Oh, no. One. Closed on negative one. Open on one. Right. That at minus one, it's a signed thing. Alternating series theorem tells you it converges. At one, it doesn't converge. Mm -hmm. Okay. The next one. What's the degree yes. difference? Negative one. Okay, so the numerator is actually going faster. So, mm -hmm. so it's zero. What's the? Oh, what's it's, it's the radius is one and negative all one, okay. one, one, both open. Okay, both open. Okay, the next one. Is both closed? Okay. Oh, so I didn't uh, mention it right now, but you can actually say a bit more than just this. So, in in the cases where the degree difference is exactly one. The end where it's closed also, you don't have absolute convergence, you just have conditional convergence, mm -hmm. right? So it's actually conditional convergence minus one. Whereas in these cases, in the case of the big difference greater than one, it's absolute convergence at both end points. Okay, let me get right that down here. So it's absolute at end points. It's always absolute in the interior. In the interior of the interval of convergence, it's it's always absolute for in any all situations. But at end points, it may be absolute or conditional. We don't know. In in this case, the given is greater than one. It's absolute at end points. Here, it's conditional at minus one. Of course, it doesn't converge at one. And so, there's no question. There's no end point to consider. Okay, great. Let's look at uh, at the fourth one. What do you think about the fourth one? What's the degree difference? Well, these are in polynomials, but the same rule applies. More line. than one. Mm -hmm. So? So it's closed on both ends. Oh, it repeated. Mm -hmm. That means I, I did it randomly, right? Because if I were doing non-random, I would always make them change. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Next one. Maybe you got confused. No. <laughs> I deliberately did it. I wish. Oh. Okay, so next one. It's less than one, greater yeah. than zero. Less than or equal to one, yeah. I mean, in this case, yeah. So the degree is two minus four thirds, so that's two thirds. So what do you get? It's closed on, on left and open on right. Okay, closed at minus one, and again, condition convergence at minus one. Okay, the next one? It's both. Both, the degree difference is 
big enough, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so thirty is slightly more than two. Okay, now this one. This one is. So this is the square calls. of L and K. Both calls. Why? Uh, because the degree difference is greater than. Oh, you were not sure. Yeah, it's not clear just from the beginning. It's it's slightly uh, yeah. more than one, but it's not integrally more than. So you actually but have to do the integral test. from last time, yes, yes. both so, close. So it's both close. You have to do the integral test mm -hmm. on on one over k one plus l and k squared. Mm -hmm. Okay, it'll turn out to be close. Okay. Uh, what about this one? It's close on left, open on the right. Again, okay, what's the actual interval of convergence? What's the center of here? Oh, it's negative 4. Okay, so? So, it will be negative 5 closed, negative 3 open. open. Okay, next one, last one. Well, this one is open on both sides. Well, no, at minus 1, it will still be closed, right? Because that, it's still the ordinating series term applies. Oh, right. It's closed on the left and open on the right. It's open on the right. The open on the right, you have to use the integral test. So for these two, you have to actually do the integral test. It's not direct from the degree difference. Okay? So, okay, so we got all of them. In all cases, the radius comes was 1. In the, there's only one situation we, we took where, where it wasn't centered at 0, and accordingly we figured out. Mm -hmm. Center over it. And at the end point, we use the degree difference, and in cases where degree difference failed, we did the integral test. We, I didn't do it here because there's another video where we've done these types of examples, but you have to do the integral test if you want to do it. Okay. Okay. Okay, great.